When is chemotherapy considered for the treatment of lung cancer? So that is a very loaded question, and I'm going to try to break it down into what we call the neoadjuvant setting, which means any kind of treatment that's given to you before surgery, the adjuvant setting, which is any kind of treatment that's given to you after surgery, and then the advanced setting or metastatic setting where you have, unfortunately, stage four disease where treatment for surgery and treatment with radiation is, is typically not really indicated and you need to approach your cancer with a more systemic um, systemic approach. So for neoadjuvant or treatment that is given before you go for surgery, this field is really developing and up and coming. And we just had a new approval come out based on a protocol known as Checkmate and this was basically looking at patients that received chemotherapy versus chemotherapy plus immunotherapy before they went to surgery. And it actually demonstrated that patients that received chemotherapy plus immunotherapy before surgery had what we call a better pathologic response, complete pathologic response, which means that when the surgeons went in there after you finished your treatment before you went for surgery, when the when the surgeons took out the tumor, a good portion of the tumor was dead, which is exactly what we wanna see. There was evidence that there was treatment response. So that is called major pathologic response. Um, so I think when we're looking at this, we're trying to extrapolate if major pathologic response correlates to overall survival and helping you live longer. So I do feel that as of right now, if you have a newly diagnosed lung cancer and you are considered to meet with a surgeon, you should ask to meet with a medical oncologist to see if you're a candidate for what we call neoadjuvant therapy, which means treatment before surgery. If unfortunately you did not meet with a medical oncologist before you had your surgery and you are referred to a medical oncologist after your surgery, this is called adjuvant therapy, which means any kind of chemotherapy after surgery. So you are a candidate to get chemotherapy after surgery for non-small cell lung cancer if you have stage two or stage three A disease. Sometimes patients have stage one B disease and they are referred to meet with me to talk about the risk versus benefit of chemotherapy in this setting. And this is not a discussion that I take lightly. Can I ask you to just comment for a second at a super high level? And and one of the things that I, uh, um, you know, I see people before they've had a chance to meet with medical oncology and, and sort of get into the nuances and I'll say, so listen, uh, you know, unfortunately we uh, did a biopsy and unfortunately the biopsy shows cancer cells. <clears throat> and then I'll say, you know, the cancer cells look like they're an adenocarcinoma. Uh, and we biopsied your lymph nodes. And I think that right now with the information that we have, you have a stage, I'm making something up, a stage three cancer. This is not something that's typically treated with surgery up front, and we're gonna send you to the medical oncologist to discuss chemotherapy. And then people will often say, well, you know, I'm not interested in chemotherapy. I really just wanna get everyone to medical oncology to have the conversation. But I think that, you know, that just the word chemotherapy has a very negative connotation. And I, I always try to tell people that this is not your grandfather's Osmobile. I mean, this is new generation that that, that we do, uh, you know, that, that it's much oftentimes much better tolerated. Great. Thank you so much. What are some side effects of chemotherapy in the treatment of lung cancer? Every chemo has different side effects, but high level, I would say it's, it's you know, myelosuppression, which means bringing your infection fighting cells down, your red blood cells down, your platelets down, um, because chemotherapy kind of comes in like a bulldozer. And any cell that's fast dividing, whether that's cancer or whether that's, you know, a cell that lines your stomach and your colon or a hair cell, it will come in and it'll knock it out in addition to the, in addition to the cancer. So a lot of there, there's a lot of innocent bystanders that get affected. So um, as I had mentioned, some some can cause hair loss. Not every chemo causes hair loss, but some do. Um, some can cause tingling and numbness of your hands and toes. We call that neuropathy. Not every chemo does that, but some can. Um, others can cause, you know, inflammation of the lungs. It's called pneumonitis. 
um, which can also happen from immunotherapy, which I can talk about um, later. Some others can cause elevations in blood pressure, give you, put you at risk for bleeding. I think some those are really the, mo the most common side effects, fatigue. Um, other than that, I think each, each chemo has its own little, little tiny things that it could cause here and there, but those seem to be the most common kind of blanketed side effects for all chemos across the board. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and you briefly mentioned this already, but uh, what is immunotherapy or targeted therapy? And when is it considered in the treatment of lung cancer? Immunotherapy basically enhances our own immune cells to recognize cancer as foreign and to attack the cancer that way. So um, it, it's Imagine that this is a normal cell in your body. One of my mentors did this for me and I found it very helpful. Um, it has five prongs for say. Anything that doesn't look like this, like a bacteria or a virus, our body will recognize this as different and it will get rid of it, right? But cancer comes in and it starts different, but then as it grows, it grows a marker that makes it look like it belongs in our body. So targeted therapy is very different. Chemo, bulldozer, immune, immunotherapy, think about that hand thing that I did. Um, targeted therapy is very different. So now we really look at everyone's lung cancer and we, we try to tailor to your tumor. So we try to identify always for every patient, no matter what, if you have a mutation or an alteration that's making your lung cancer grow. And this should be checked on every single patient with stage four lung cancer, regardless of if you have smoked or you have not smoked, it should be checked on everybody. And we are really pushing to check for these mutations or alterations regardless of stage, because we are learning time and time again that these, these drugs that were approved in stage four are now moving into stage three and then stage two and stage one. So it should be done and you should advocate for yourself to ask for this testing called next generation sequencing testing. And this is testing on your tumor to look for a mutation that's making your lung cancer grow. So targeted therapy is therapy that is geared directly towards one of these mutations if you have it. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and just expanding on some of the side effects, what are the most common side effects of immunotherapy or targeted therapy in the treatment of lung cancer? So, so immunotherapy I, I had mentioned can cause inflammation of any organ from head to toe, from your brain. It can cause an irritation of the skin with a rash. It can cause irritation of your thyroid, your lungs, which is pneumonitis, your liver, hepatitis, your colon colitis, diarrhea, arthritis. And most of these side effects, if caught early, can be treated with steroids. Because if you think if immunotherapy is agitating things, right? And if you have an inflamed, organ, a steroid will calm that down. So if you take steroids, our hope is that we would reverse that toxicity. And, and most of the time we are able to reverse it, but there are times where we are not able to, and, and it, can be, it can be detrimental. So it, you need to go into this therapy with your eyes wide open that it is unfortunately not a free lunch, um, but can be very effective for the right patient. Great, thank you so much uh, for the discussion. Uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, Dr. Park, uh, what are types of radiation therapy that can be used in the treatment of lung cancer? Thanks very much. So, um, so radiation therapy, uh, there, there, there are several kinds of radiation therapy that are used in general, but for lung cancer, the most common kind is external beam radiation. So this is radiation therapy coming from the outside, really high energy x-rays uh, that are given to you in a very customized fashion and really directed at your tumor uh, that is uh, really meant to avoid your normal organs as much as possible. Um, so um, this can be delivered in quite a few different ways. Um, we can really, it, and it really depends, I think, uh, on the, the stage of the tumor and, and uh, how large the tumor is and where it sits. Uh, so um, we, we might use 30 sessions of radiation five days a week over six weeks but use very low doses uh, in order to treat larger areas 
and especially areas that are towards the middle of the chest, such as the lymph nodes. Um, and especially if there are multiple lymph nodes involved, such as in stage three lung cancer, that's often what we'll use is this kind of longer, um, this longer course radiation therapy over six weeks. However, for stage one disease, uh, and sometimes for some stage four disease, we use something called SBRT or SABR. So if you talk about alphabet soup, SBRT is, uh, is uh, it, it, it actually stands for stereotactic body radiation therapy. But other people like to call it SABR, S-A-B-R, which is stereotactic ablative radiation therapy. And the idea behind that is we, give, we can give very high doses of radiation uh, for only a few number of sessions, typically between three and five sessions, if it's a very small area that we're targeting. Uh, so this is something we do for the very earliest stage cancers when we um, you know, have just a single nodule in the lung itself that we can treat by itself um, and, and with radiation alone and, and often are able to cure patients of their disease. Uh, and sometimes for stage four patients where we're not necessarily curing the disease with the radiation and the backbone is still the uh, chemotherapy or targeted therapy or immune therapy uh, that we heard about earlier. Uh, but radiation therapy can sometimes be used as an adjunct to that and using SBRT or SABR uh, to areas that, um, that are, are, you know, if only one or two different areas are growing and everything else has been stable, we'll often use SBRT for that as well. Fantastic. Um, and you have uh, touched on this briefly, but uh, can you summarize when is radiation therapy considered in the treatment of lung cancer? Right. Uh, so, so for non-small cell lung cancer first, uh, for stage one lung cancer, uh, we tend to use either surgery or, uh, or SBRT uh, for, the, for the treatment and, and, and hopefully cure of this uh, lung cancer. Um, oftentimes surgery is still considered the gold standard, but radiation therapy or SBRT can be used uh, and with very good outcomes as well um, and, uh, and, and is a very good alternative for, for some patients. Uh, for stage two and three patients, uh, the, uh, at least for stage two, the goal is typically surgery along with systemic therapy, meaning either chemotherapy and or immune therapy. Uh, but for some people who can't undergo surgery, that's where chemo and radiation together are very helpful. Uh, and for stage three is, is one of the most complicated areas and most nuanced areas. Um, and that's usually some kind of combination of, of chemotherapy, radiation, uh, surgery, uh, and or immune therapy. Um, so a lot of times chemo and radiation are used without surgery for those cases, uh, but sometimes surgery is used as well. Um, in stage four, I mentioned um, sometimes we treat people when they um, have uh, you know, only certain areas that grow even with stage four disease. Um, but then sometimes we use, uh, actually quite often use radiation for palliation of symptoms, meaning if the lung cancer is starting to obstruct the airways or block off the airways um, and, and, and keep the lungs from getting enough air uh, because of a lung cancer, we might, uh, we might treat that with lower doses just to kind of calm that down and keep that under control, uh, even while the systemic therapy works on the rest of the body. Uh, we may treat the brain as well if it spread to the brain um, to try to relieve symptoms there and, and also to prevent new symptoms from coming up. If it spreads to the bone um, and it causes pain or it causes a fracture, then that's often where we use radiation as well. Um, and in a small cell lung cancer, we also do the same in terms of the earlier stage cancers, stage one, two, and three. We'll use radiation for the intention of cure of these cancers. And then for stage four, we'll use it for palliation to help you feel better, uh, as well as sometimes for what's called consolidation, meaning that after you've received some systemic therapy for a few months, and things have gone pretty well and nothing has really grown, um, then you might treat the, 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 the leftover areas with radiation as well. After you, Dr. Park, what are the risks and side effects of radiation therapy in the treatment of lung cancer? So I'd say for SBRT, where we're focusing on very small areas, um, the main side effect is fatigue. You'll feel a little bit tired for a few weeks uh, after the treatment, usually during the treatment and afterwards. You might be a little more tired than usual, a little more run down. Uh, typically after that, uh, that's that's often the only side effect patients get uh, for a while until, uh, you know, as months and years go along, sometimes they can develop that lung inflammation that we heard about uh, earlier, and, and, and that, can, um, that can manifest itself even, even long after treatment. 
A lot of times it doesn't affect you, so it's often seen on the scans, uh, but most patients don't even notice that it's going on. But it could lead to a little bit uh, lower exercise tolerance, meaning how far you can walk or run and such without getting a little bit short of breath. Uh, could lead to a little bit more of a cough as well. Uh, but there, uh, there can be more of those risks depending on if uh, the tumors are getting close to the esophagus. You can uh, see more difficulty with swallowing, uh, with heartburn, things like that. Um, if you're uh, if you're close to um, uh, uh, you know other other, uh, other areas like you know we talked about the lung, but there's also the ribs as well. That if you're close to the ribs with the treatment, um, you could be at suddenly increased risk of rib fracture uh, or of chest wall pain, uh, depending on where the the tumor sits. And of course, the heart is another area in the chest that's very important that we try to spare as much as we can from getting scattered dose because we do know that um, that radiation therapy, if uh, if given to a large portion of the heart, uh, can uh, can increase the risk of heart-related disease down the road too. Uh, but I also do want to reemphasize that uh, you know we always take these risks into account when recommending whether or not to use radiation therapy or not, and and the um, the, the really only if the benefits of the treatment outweigh these risks uh, is it something that we would would recommend. Fantastic! Thanks to all of our panelists. Um, so there's many organizations to help patients and their families cope with cancer diagnosis. Just to mention briefly a couple of them, the American Cancer Society um, has information, ASTRO, and in other words, the American Society of Radiation Oncology, RT Answers. Um, there's also the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO, as well as other websites. Um, all of these websites provide free publications about a variety of topics related to lung cancer, its treatment, and managing side effects. Uh, we encourage everyone to visit rtanswers.org for more information on radiation therapy treatments. You will also find a full array of information, including brochures, videos on a variety of cancers, more information about radiation therapy, questions you should ask your doctor, as well as patient stories from people who have had radiation therapy. You can also visit Cancer Grace at cancergrace.org to learn more about current and emerging cancer management options in order to empower you as a patient, your caregivers, and health professionals to become direct partners in cancer care. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you.